I'm no longer just educating people on what wearable technology is. We're getting to that next level. We're really thinking about what it means to be human um, and how do we design for humans in a digital age. For me, my job is really to be a body architect, um, to think about those nooks and crannies, the softness and the movement of the body, and then how do we integrate technology into that space. So I'm going to start with a little bit of my story. Um, I actually, ooh, did that work? There we go. I have a background in design. Um, my mother started a fashion design school in Australia. Um, it's the equivalent of Parsons or of Central St. Martins in the UK. We host Australia's Project Runway. Um, so I've literally met and seen some of the most bizarre things you can ever imagine. I, um, I could build a catwalk, I could light a catwalk, I could do the music for the catwalk, I could make the clothes, I could dress the models. I was a one-woman circus, um, and that's just how it has to be when it's a family business. Um, from that, I sort of evolved into business development, and I was building really interesting industry curriculum into the course. Uh, so the students were designing things that were actually then being sold out in industry. With all of that, I was having the right conversations at the right time about what the future of this industry really is going to be um, and how we can use fabrics and fibres and technologies to really invigorate fashion, to give it intelligence, uh, to make sure that everything you put on your back has a purpose. Um, so the first project that I worked on was a project called Funderwear. And Funderwear is vibrating underwear for couples in long-distance relationships. <laughs> And yes, I tried it on every single one of my friends and I said, does this seam hit your junk? And it was the most inappropriate six months of my life and I never thought that as a fashion designer, this is what I was going to be spending my time doing. Um, but again, those like really, really core principles of design became really important. Um, softness, movement, that is exactly what you think about. So following this, we created a product called the Alert Shirt. We built this for Fox Sports. And now this is an amazing fan jersey that you can wear so you feel the emotions of your favorite team live as you're watching the game. So you select through our smartphone application which team you'd like to follow and then you can get all of that built into your chest live as you're watching it. You tackle every week of training. Always been told to play a physical style. When the game's in the balance, you give anything you can to help your team win. There's different types of pressure just in the game. You sort of get a bit nervous and, and your heart rate, you definitely know it um, starts beating through your jumper. So yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to get you hit this bag as hard as you can and we're going to collect all the data and then later on we're going to analyse that and put that into the sensations that the viewers feel. Well, Foxtel are all about bringing you closer to the game. If anyone is going to have ownership on having this connection to the, to the players or to the game, it's really Foxtel. The alert shirt is designed for fans. It's for fans so they can feel like they're a part of the game, they're a little bit closer to the players, a little bit closer to feeling like they're in the team. These data feeds that um, exist for every game, and they've been used for real-time match updates and people are looking at apps. So we took that data, uh, score data, tackle data, we feed that through to a server, and then we branch that out to different people's phones. And so anyone that's got the, the app installed is receiving this real-time data instantaneously. To have Bluetooth and a, a CPU together on one chip, that's really the, the core or the brains behind it. We've got control of haptic feedback motors that transfer touch uh, to the skin. If a player is tackled, then you get to feel the physical effect of that. But if a player is nervous before a kick, then you get fluttering, you get that kind of sensory experience. So you've got a really fast pathway and you can feel it in milliseconds. So you, as soon as someone's tackled, you're feeling it. It's about as close as you're gonna to get to feeling the sensations that a player feels by watching a game. Okay, 
Uh, so part of the magic of that product was that we actually built it in four months and we did 4,500 units and we del delivered it all out, all over Christmas and Chinese New Year and it nearly killed us. Um, but we, what we figured out is that we could act really, really fast and that as a young startup, we were really agile. So we could throw all of our team on this one product instead of having it over a five other products that we work on at once. It was about moving really quickly and thinking really creatively in this space. How do I pull all the right strings at the right time to make sure this happens? Um, we actually run four projects at the same time. So there's an industrial design project, there's a fashion design project, there's a hardware electronical design project, as well as software. What I loved about this project more than anything was that it wasn't just about quantifying the sportsman's experience. It actually took it into the hands of the fan. This is something that's not being done that much everywhere else. You're not thinking about where all the eyeballs are, and the eyeballs are the fans that are watching this sport. That's where your mass market is. Your mass market isn't always going to be with elite athletes. Um, so I obviously enjoyed this because I spent a lot of time really understanding the inside of the game. And with any project that we do, we deep dive on a discovery and we spend time literally with the fans, understanding where their pain points were, understanding even from a stadium perspective, who is not paying attention at what time. There's these really interesting data like analytics around women being scared to ask questions not wanting to, to seem like they don't understand the game. Um, I really enjoy this from an emotional perspective. Um, so when we're designing, we design with emotions. It's not just about how do we do things the most efficient way. It's actually about designing for emotions in that experience. So this is what the wearable tech space looks like. Uh, I know that you've seen many pie graphs in your time. But this was from Beach and Research, and this was about two years old. And the reason I bring it up is because they missed huge chunks. They missed entertainment, and they missed travel. Um, and obviously, we know what's happening with the cars at the moment, and we think that's really, really relevant. Um, but I think we've got to start thinking beyond where these traditional markets are and start blending different markets together. So this is part of my philosophy, and I'm going to sort of take you down that journey. Um, I try to not let the tech come before the human experience. Too often have I seen another big chunky watch or another thing that sits on your wrist. I call that the arm party. I don't want to really be a part of it. I believe in technologies being fully integrated into my life and invisible. They have to help me and they have to augment my experience. I didn't expect to really narrow it down to two data outputs that I design for now. Um, no longer am I going, oh my god, we can know so much about this person. Then I just realized there's so much white noise. The more data, the more confusion sometimes. You really need to concentrate it down on what exactly do you want to know, to know about these people while you're designing the product. And then this is going to be really interesting from now on. How do you design for movement and the evolution of these products? So we know that hardware needs to be updated. We know that software needs to be updated. I think in terms of fashion. So we have seasons. We have autumn, winter, we have spring, summer. You should be updating your technology the same way that you update your seasons in fashion. And touch. Touch is becoming even more relevant as we run this really, really fast life. There are statistics out there that say that we're actually forgetting to use touch as a form of communication in our day-to-day -day life because we're so dependent on our technology. So bringing touch from that physical to the digital and then back again. So as I got to New York, um, only a year ago, actually, I realized that I, regardless of the grid system, I would get out of the subway and I'd get totally confused. I didn't know if I was facing north or south or east or west, and I would walk the wrong way for blocks. Um, so I've built a product that is entirely around using my eyes and using my skin as a communication tool. So here is what happened to me. I literally fell off sidewalks. I nearly got hit by taxis, and I had other people run into me as well, constantly. I mean, this city is full of that hustle and bustle, but I really wasn't expecting it to be that life-threatening. <laughs> so I built a jacket. Um, the jacket is called Navigate. So you upload from your smartphone where you would like to travel to, and then instead of having to look down at the map, the jacket will tap you on the shoulder, when to turn left, when to turn right, and then double time when you arrive. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We've, we've made them city-specific jackets. Um, so this first jacket was actually for Sydney. And although the software and the hardware is exactly the same, they're removable and you can put it into any jacket you like, we know that you don't want to wear the jacket, the same jacket, every day. Uh, so this is the New York jacket.
And then finally, the Paris jacket. Uh, so inspired by my trip to Paris Fashion Week last year where I actually presented to all the luxury brands on what the future of wearable technology is. Um, I've had amazing experiences, similarly at CES. Uh, we curated an apartment of the future, which was about empathetic technologies. Um, so how millennial women interact with technologies and how it is still about emotions. Um, and thank you very much.